class good morning um our next lesson for today is all about the philosophical reflection um, in here you are going to do a philosophical reflection in a concrete situation from a holistic perspective so the the there are three questions that will guide us number one what is the marcellian philosophical reflection second what is the Husserlian phenomenological method and the third is how do we picture the method of philosophy the content is doing philosophy so learning competencies for today is you are going to do a philosophical reflection uh, on a concrete situation from a holistic perspective so in here, uh, you are going to learn how to philosophize an object, a thing, or a phenomenon, or something, or an experience, or an event, some kind of like that situation, in a view which is holistic, so not just partial. Try to familiarize the competencies, okay? So philosophical reflection is the careful examination of life situations. And this involves the weighing of several alternatives and using ex specific standards to evaluate one's action. A man reflects philosophically when he is able to build on previous actions events or decisions so that is how to do philosophical reflection what is philosophical reflection um, a very known uh, philosopher regarding philosophical reflection is Gabriel Marcel so Gabriel was trained in philosophy by Henry Bergson so, and among others Marcel is a prolific lifelong writer. His early works reflected his interest in idealism. So as Marcel developed philosophically, however, his work was marked by an emphasis on the concrete on life experience. So that is how uh, Marcel philosophized. And as far as reading is concerned, Mar Marcel reflects using two a method of reflection, the primary reflection, and the secondary reflection. So, primary reflection is a kind of thinking that calculates, analyzes, or recounts past events. In and in this way, primary reflection is a frag fragmented and compartmentalized thinking. So, primary reflection is instrumental thinking and is a means in kind of struggle. Okay, so we have secondary reflection. Secondary reflections allows us to think holistically. And this way, secondary reflection enables us to integrate our fragmented and compartmentalized experience into a coherent whole. Kumbaga from, from pieces to whole. So that's it. So that is how we are going to reflect using secondary reflection. And according to Jay and Ryan, when Marcel speaks of philosophical reflection, he specifically refers to secondary reflection. That is how Jay and Ryan describe philosophical reflections of Marcel. So that's how Marcel do his philosophical reflection. Okay. The necessary skills needed in doing philosophy. So, philosophical reflection and construction and evaluation of arguments need to have philosophical reflections enables us to look deeper into our experiences and see the bigger picture of reality. So, we have to look into the, the deeper meaning of something, of such expression or experiences.
Uh, we have to go deeper. We have to broaden, to broaden the the scenario, to broaden the the, the events, the experiences. So when we construct and evaluate, construction and evaluation of arguments will always allow us to express our ideas in a systematic and logical way. It allows us to examine the ideas of other people. Actually, that's how important the skills in doing philosophy. Okay? So these are the references if you're going to try to look into the, uh, the materials we used in this video presentation, try to, uh, try to just access the following references. So we have first example, which is life. So in here, our primary reflection is, it is a biological functioning of the organs. Means breathing, beating of the heart, the functioning of the eyes, um, or nose, and everything. Meaning each function of the organs. So it is uh, looking into life in which the biological functions of all organs is being considered. And now let's move on to secondary reflection. In secondary reflection, uh, life is defined as having a life means having friends and loved ones, being with them and enjoying with them. So that is secondary reflection of life. House. Another example is house. So when we reflect primarily, uh, it is being focused on structure, the design of the house, the size of the house, the color of the house, that's it. But if we're going to reflect second in a secondary reflection, it is not only considered as a house, but a home in which family, love, and bonding is present in that particular house. So that's it is ball pen so ball pen is primarily reflected as a writing material whether what brand is that panda or or it's BW or or brand color blue black red etc and the shape of that particular ball pen when it comes to secondary reflection, it can be uh, that ball pen is a gift from father which has a sentimental value like that. Okay? Rain. So if we're going to reflect rain primarily, of course it is just a natural phenomenon. But secondary reflection 
tells us that rain is a blessing from God for a farmer. And of course, for a commuter, it is a course. So some kind of like that. So love is reduced to chemical reactions within the brain. So that's according to uh, Marcel. If we're going to reflect love, as primary reflection, using primary reflection. But if we're going to use secondary reflection, then love is defined as an experience of giving, giving oneself to one another. So meaning it's not just an ordinary emotion, but it is what you call as um, the holistic view of love. Okay? Example is who am I? So if we're going to reflect yourself or me, for example, I like to just say my name, my address, height, weight, whatever. Or it's just like filling up a bio data. But if I'm going to reflect myself, secondary reflection I'll be using, then I would like to look into the innermost core of my being and my personhood. Did you get my idea, class? Okay is pillow okay pillow is uh when i reflect that pillow uh, a primary reflection then it can be an object used for sleeping that's it. that's all but if i would reflect using secondary reflection then i would like to tell that it is like a friend of mine because whenever i have problem or whenever i'm sad and lonely i can have that pillow or it tears me whenever i'm crying that's it so let's move on to Husserlian phenomenological method of doing philosophy. So uh, the term epochi or epoch, how we are going to pronounce this, anyway, there are many Englishes in the world. Uh, I would like to pronounce this as epoch. Charot. It means removal or bracketing of the biases we have with the object. So when we are going to use method, this number one, uh, we are going to tell or answer the following questions. So we have, what is the natural attitude, attitude towards the object or experience? So you simply define or put into or reflect into the natural attitude. Second is, what are the biases and prejudices towards the object or experience? And Third, an example of this is love as, is a blind. Love is a many splendored thing. So this is for a Serlian method, method for uh, phenomenological uh, reflection or view. So this is a puche. The second phenomenological method is using edetic reduction. So this comes from the word edus means essence. So we have to answer the following questions. What is the essence of the object? What is the actual definition of the object or experience? Then uh, love is the giving of oneself to another person, be it conjugal, parental, or filial. So that is using the edetic reduction. Then the third method, the Hasarian phenomenological method, is the transcendental reduction. My very own experience of the phenomenon. So we have to answer the following questions. Number one, what is my own experience of the object or experience? Or what are my personal understanding towards the object or phenomenon? And my own experience of love, like love for one's parents. So that is how we are going to uh, do philosophical method or how we are going to philosophize using the Husserlian method of phenomenology. Okay, the next uh, set of slides is all about how to distinguish opinion from truth. Okay, before we proceed, let us try to sing and learn.
Yeah, but that's just their opinion. Not everybody believes the way they do. Really? Yeah, really. Aw, that's like the nicest thing any rotten old boys ever said to me. What? What's that supposed to mean? It means that boys are rotten. Huh? Oh, and they smell it too. What? And me, and they talk too much. Whoa, 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 that's just your opinion. No, that's a fact. That's an opinion. Fact. Opinion? Fact. That's not true. It's true. It is not. It's true. It is not true. It's true. I'm gonna go tell my mommy oh, that she's so right. so bad. And you're not gonna tell me. So based on the song, what have you learned? Well, let's learn more on the next presentation.
Hey Stallions, today we are going to play a fact or opinion game. Are you ready? You can do this game with a buddy or you can do it by yourself. If you want to do it with a buddy, now's a good time to pause your video and find a buddy. Okay, in this game, if whatever I say is an opinion, you're going to raise your hand like this cute emoji. If it's a fact, you're going to do an X with your arms. Here we go. Are you ready to play? Get those arms ready. My mom is the best mom. Is that a fact or an opinion? If you think it's an opinion, you're going to raise your hand. If you think it's a fact, you're going to make an X with your hands. Go ahead. Do you and your partner agree? Let's check our work. It's an opinion. Next one, bats can fly. Is that a fact or opinion? If you think it's a fact, you're going to make an X with your arms. If you think it's an opinion, you're going to raise your hand. Bats can fly. Do you and your partner agree? Let's check the answer. It's a fact. Did you get it right? Or did you get it wrong? Talk to your partner. The sun is hot. Is that a fact or an opinion? Yep, that's a fact. Football is fun to play. Is that a fact or an opinion? Do you and your partner agree? It's an opinion. Frogs can be green. Fact or opinion? That's a fact. Now, here's one more that we have to do. This one I want you to put on Seesaw for your teacher to see. Pizza is very good. Is that a fact or an opinion? Um, you can go ahead and either raise your hand or make an X, and then I want you to go on Seesaw and tell your teacher if it's, an effect, if it's a fact or opinion. Go ahead. Is it a fact or opinion? You're going to tell your teacher on Seesaw. If you're still watching, after you make your Seesaw video, you can ask your teacher for a dojo point. Thanks for watching the whole video and being a great listener. Hey, Stallions.
Okay. According to Aristotle, philosophy is a science that considers the truth. Okay. So to know something is to doubt. That's according to uh, Rene Descartes. So Rene Descartes is so skeptic. The skeptic thinks that there is nothing true or false or that everything is equally true and false and that we are unable to know what is true or what is false. That we simply don't have knowledge or possess the truth. Hi, we're looking at ways to improve your reading comprehension by thinking more critically. One of the things you should do is to see if the information is a fact or an opinion. Oh, that's easy, right? Well, there's a great area there. If someone says the earth is flat, is that a fact or an opinion? The answer might surprise you, so stick around and let's talk about distinguishing fact and opinion. Hi, welcome to Snap Language. I'm Mark Franco. If I say it's 30 degrees Celsius outside, you can verify the information. All you need is a thermometer or, well, your smartphone. The information is objective. It's based on data and observation. However, if I say it's very hot, now that's an opinion. 30 degrees Celsius is a fact. It's objective information that I can verify. But you may think 30 degrees Celsius is comfortable. Another person may say 30 degrees Celsius is really hot. Each person can have a different opinion. So, facts are verifiable and objective. You can check the information and tell if it's true or untrue. Opinions cannot be verified and they're subjective. They change according to a person's judgment. It's a fact that it's 30 degrees Celsius, but each person may feel differently about that. When something's presented as a fact, does it also mean it's true? Well, these are separate issues. In the passage, a writer can present information as a fact, even though it may be inaccurate or even flat out wrong. It's up to you as the reader to examine the information carefully to make sure it's relevant and accurate. Let's look at this chart. It shows the average course grades that students received in a course. Half of the students took the course with Professor X, the other half took it with Professor B. You can see their average course grades here. We can make several statements based on this information. For example, Professor X's students earned an average course grade of 95. Professor B's students earned an average course grade of 85. These statements are presented as facts and the information is accurate. I can check it right here in the graph. Professor X's students earned a higher average course grade than did Professor B's students. Again, I can check the information on the graph. It's presented as a fact. Students in Professor X's course earned a higher average course grade. Uh, therefore, Professor X is a better instructor. Okay, now we get into a bit of a gray area. We saw that this is a fact, but saying Professor X is a better instructor is an opinion. It is possible Professor X did a better job, but it's also possible that Professor B did a good job too, but his students didn't do very well for some reason. This opinion is based on the fact that one group of students did better than the other, but it's still just an opinion. Professor X has more experience than Professor B. In addition, Professor X's students did better in a course. Therefore, Professor X is a better instructor than Professor B. Now, this is presented as a fact. I trust it's true, but I can also verify it by looking at the instructor's professional records. We also have a fact here. His students did do better. We can see that in the graph. 
But this conclusion that he's a better instructor is still an opinion. It's a little stronger now because it's based on two pieces of evidence, but it's still an opinion. So back to where we started, if I say the earth is flat, is that a fact or an opinion? Well, the information is presented as a fact. You can verify it and you'll find that it's wrong. So when information is presented as a fact, it is verifiable and objective based on statistics, data, observations. It could be right, wrong, or misleading. It's up to you to verify the evidence. When the information is presented as an opinion, you cannot verify it. An opinion may be based on facts, but it's subjective. It's based on feelings or judgments. Does that mean opinions are bad? Not necessarily. Opinions are weak when they're based only on a guess or your personal feeling or judgment. The more factual information you base your opinions on, the stronger they are and the more compelled you are to agree with them. Both facts and opinions are important parts of sharing knowledge and ideas. In a study, researchers found that two-thirds of college seniors failed a high school grammar test. This points to the poor state of higher education in the United States. Let's see, this is presented as a fact. I trust that there was a study and this is what they found. This, this is problematic. It's just an opinion. Yes, you can judge the quality of higher education based on whatever you want, but others may disagree that this information is a good measure of quality. I can read the study to verify what these researchers found, but I cannot verify that the quality of education is high or low based on it. An opinion based on fact is still an opinion. Is it a strong opinion? Let's see, the study found that these college seniors failed some high school grammar test. What was the test like? Can a grammar test be used to judge the quality of higher education? Mm, I'm not so sure about that. Is there a better way to measure quality? This is a somewhat weak opinion because the evidence doesn't support it very well at all. So the point is that an opinion based on facts is stronger than one that's based on just feelings or personal judgment. But you must still ask questions about those facts. Don't simply agree with someone's opinion as if it were factual. So keep this in mind the next time you read something. Oh, check the descriptions below the video for more materials. One opinion I never question is when people like and share my videos. So go ahead. We'll be talking about other... Hi.
Another attitude toward truth is relativism. And according to this view, some things that are true for you are false for me. And what may be true for me is false for you. And what was once true in some other period of history or in some other culture is no longer true today. Against this position of the relativity of truth, to individuals or cultures, there is the opposite view that truth is objective, not subjective, and relative that is absolute and immutable, always and everywhere the same for all men. So truth is dependent on the person. Truth is what works. Then there is the pragmatic attitude towards truth which says that truth consists in those ideas or those thoughts of ours which mere practical fruit in action that truth consists in the things which work. Truth is what works in, we, in the way of our thinking and as against this emphasis on action and practical results as the measure of truth, there are those who say that such practical verification in action or experience is not needed at all for man's having a grasp of the truth. So truth is what works. Now, what is the difference? Fact is based on what's official. Truth is based on what's real. I call bullshit. Okay, well, probably you want an example, right? Take a look at this car. Now, look at the color of the vehicle. Chances are you're looking at it and saying, oh, it's a green car. Well, what if I told you that, officially speaking, the car was blue? No, the car is not blue, it's green. Officially speaking, and I have it on paper here that this vehicle is in fact blue. And then sometime later you find out the truth and find out the reality behind it that the vehicle is actually green. Well, why didn't they just say it was green in the first place? Chances are they did it because they wanted to get rid of that vehicle because who wants to buy that piece of junk? Selling it as a green car wasn't selling. So they decide to just lie and make up some bull crap and say, well, you know what? Blue seems to be doing so well. Why don't we just say this vehicle's blue? And no one will be the wiser. So the fact is, the vehicle is blue. But the truth is that it was green. Obviously, that's just a scenario. I don't know if that really happened. But I'm pretty damn sure it's happened at one point or another. And just in case you guys are looking at me and going, well, dude, look, you can't argue with the facts. What about science, huh? You can't argue with the scientific facts. No, that's true. I can't argue with scientific facts. Well, technically speaking, I can't argue with science, but I can argue with the scientists behind the matter. And this isn't the first time that scientific facts haven't been contradicted. Let's turn the clock back mm, 70, 75 years, back when most of us weren't born. <laughs> And anyone who is watching this, well, hi, <laughs> back in those days, how was it back then? It was actually a fact, believe it or not, that smoking was good for you. Wait, hold up! What? No, oh, no, 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 oh yes, 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 yes. It was a fact that smoking was good for you, that it would keep you healthy and help you to breathe better. <sighs> ah, into a grave, six feet under. It wasn't until the late 40s that they actually found out, uh, no, uh, we were, we were, we were wrong. No, this, this didn't, that didn't really happen. That lung cancer that your father had, smoking. But I'm not trying to say that because the difference is there that you should ignore the facts. No, facts are good. Don't get me wrong. We need facts in this world. Why? Because how else can we get ourselves closer to the truth if we don't have the facts? So facts are a good thing to have in order for us to get a better perspective of the truth. So we do need those things. We do need facts. However, don't always think that the facts are always true. Fact is based on what's official. Truth is based on what's real. And I sincerely hope you get your facts straight about anything that comes your way, because you never know when you could be misinformed about a certain situation.
Now what is the difference? Fact is based. Now what is the difference? So truth is what corresponds from the mind with the reality. So based from the previous presentation that there is a difference between fact and truth. So the truth in the mind is the correspondence of the mind with reality. Or the truth of our speech is a correspondence of what we say, what we think. If this is the case, then the simple problem of telling the truth Everyone except the pathological liar is able to know quite directly whether his own words faithfully express what he thinks. That corresponds that correspondence between my speech and my thought is something that I myself can directly inspect. I have no problem of seeing whether or not my speech corresponds with my thoughts. So I'd like to propose that here we follow the clear definition. A statement is true if it says that that which is is or if it says that what which is not is not. And a statement is false if it is says that what is is not is or that what is not what is is not. I think anyone was ever told a lie and was sent understand what this means putting is where is not should be put or is not where it should be put kumaga kung unsa ang kung unsa ang tinuod mo ay tinuod or what is white is white not that what is white you are going to call it black gets guys okay so 
Reality consists of existence, and those existence are things to be apprehended or known. So this is another, uh, let's say, another philosophy. That reality consists of the facts about which I am trying to make the propositions. And the proposition is true if they correspond with the facts. earlier on in the conversation. What's real for me, truth is absolute. Mm. Real and reality is relative. Reality is based, you know, is conditional and is, is like scientific fact. There is no absoluteness in scientific fact. It's constantly changing. Everything, everything in the science world and everything in the physical world is constantly changing. So there is nothing absolute because what, what is considered science today or knowledge today, tomorrow people might laugh at it. Just as we are laughing at a lot of the things that were considered knowledge about 200 years ago, now it's nothing but superstitious. Mm. So what we need to realize and understand that truth is different. And truth is, you know, within us. I have a story that I have it in my, in my book also, uh, that the, God and uh, some of uh, the angels were sitting and they said, let's play a game with humans. That's towards the end of my book. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, God asked every angel, okay, you tell me, what's the best uh, place to put the truth? And uh, What's the best place to put the truth? Yeah. I'm trying to remember this story from the book, okay. Yeah, where do we put the truth? So, so let's play a game. So humans could never find it. And they never, you know, look for it and never find it. So one of the angels says, okay, let's go to the... Uh, bottom of the ocean, the deepest part of the ocean, and we just put it there, and they will never find it. But then, you know, they say, no, but the science, if they can find it through science and everything, and they find, they eventually build some submarines that go deep enough and do that. So the other one says, okay, let's put it on the top of that mountain into deep within, and then again, they, they say, no, they're going to find it. Another person says, let's go to a, another galaxy and, uh, or another star and just hide it there. And then they said, okay, science could probably get there and uh, eventually find it. So they keep saying, you know, let's put it here and let's put it there. And then one of the wisest angels uh, says, I got it. Uh, the best place to put the truth so humans will never find it is within themselves. So they'll never find it? <laughs> well, it's just a metaphor and yeah. it's just a story. Yeah. Uh, but, well, I'm telling you where to find it now. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. you know. But, Really, whatever answer we are seeking mm -hmm. that is not going to be answered by science or logic or common sense or the mind or the tools of these dimensions of physical realm, then the answer is only within yourself. And, and I think the point that I was trying to make earlier about the, the, you said the truth is absolute, but I think the point I was trying to make is that, that, that everyone's path is different that what is right for you uh, is not necessarily right for me, that, that, that your path to spiritual awakening mm -hmm. might be different from my path to spiritual awakening. Yes. awakening. Yeah, the path is, yeah, the path is different, and, uh, and I think we have different paths based on the needs of the soul to grow. Uh, but right and wrong also comes from the mind and the belief system. But what is true is true. And what is true, absolute truth is, I mean, the truth is uh, never changing. There is, the truth is that never, you know, uh, th there has no beginning, there is no end, there is no up and there is no down, there is no left, there is no opposite, there is nothing. There is no opposite to truth. There is real and then there is false. But there is no opposite to truth. Just as the, when you get enlightened and that light, there is no opposite to that light. But in, in the reality of these five you know, dimensions, the opposite of light is darkness. But the true light, there is no opposite to that. It just is. There is it just is. There is no, darkness does not even have a meaning because mm -hmm. it's just dark. I mean, it's just light. And there is no darkness. earlier on in the
So the immutability of truth is is truth eternal or does it change? Okay, that's the immutability. Okay, these are some of the references. If you wish to look into the materials we are using, you can refer to these references. Okay, that's the end of this lesson too. Thank you very much, guys. Wait, you have ended week two.